We have one of the greatest lessons to be taught today is our lesson today. If this lesson can get within our spirits, not just our bodies, our souls, if this lesson can get into our spirits, it can change our world around about us. One of the ways to be more like God, maybe than any other way, is this lesson today. The, the back part of your uh, bulletin gives you some of the lesson. Uh, if you will uh, follow that. Otherwise, just follow me because I have 16 points and I wish to get them all to you. We have been lecturing re relating to the promises of God. And this is the promises in relationship to giving to God. You could also call it the miracle of prosperity and health. There are set laws for prosperity on the face of this earth, not just in the church, in the, on the face of this earth. Those laws are as strong as the laws of gravitation. They work. You break them and they, they just don't work. But if you adhere to them, they do work. There are immutable guarantees that are made to those who follow these laws. And if you follow them consistently, and if you follow them from the depths of your spirit within you, they will do something for your life. And I say that after many years of observing, not only in this country, but around the world. We know what it means in a country like the Philippines to, to bring into being thousands of new converts. And for those people to come into a divine relationship with God, that from poverty, they just rose right up to be middle income people. When they just had nothing, by the prosperity of God coming upon them, they just rose up and became another people. And I want to assure you that God loves you, that God cares for you, and that you can be blessed from this point forward, greater than you have from this point backward, and I don't care how much you've already been blessed. We don't have it all yet. God's desire for you is interrelated into the various parts of your total being. In 3 John, verse 2, the word says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Say prosper. And also to be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. You find three areas of prosperity right there. You find material blessing first, that you will prosper. You find physical blessing second, that you will have healing. You find spiritual blessing third, that you will have growth in God and that your spiritual being will be strong and not weak. God has set the pattern for this. He didn't wait for you to set the pattern. God is the greatest giver of all times and everywhere. In Matthew 7 and 11, it says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? So God sets the pattern. If you know how to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly Father know how to give good gifts to them that ask Him? In Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, you discover that it was by sacrifice that God did His giving. He that spareth not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, shall He not with Him also freely give us all things. God did not spare His own only begotten Son, but delivered Him up. He gave Him to you and to me. He says, gave Him up for us all. How shall He not with Him freely give you all things? If God made the supreme sacrifice of giving His Son, 
It's just not much sacrifice to bless you. He's already gone the long way. The short way is easy. He's already given the big gift. The small ones are easy for him. He says he gave his son for you. And then if he's already done that, he will freely give you all things. Romans 8 and 32. How many love the word of God? How many believe it's true? Now, let's work on it then. Let's make it great within our lives. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, we find the, the great secret of giving. Our Lord said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Running over. Shall men, put a little circle there, men, not angels, not heaven, not in the next life. He says there's a principle, there's a fundamental principle. If you will give, it will be given back unto you. Only when it comes back to you, it will be good measure. It will be pressed down. It will be shaken together. It will be running over. Men shall give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So many times things that happen to us that hurt us is the returning of what we have done to somebody else. Somebody speaks evil of us, we have forgotten that we have spoken evil of someone else. If we could just learn that whatever we do is a planted seed, and it will grow, it will bring forth a harvest, and then we would plant love, we would plant joy. Everybody still here? <laughs> you would plant joy. So you can have, you say, how can you plant joy? By giving to others. A few years ago, I dropped by in my car to see a, a, a classmate that I had known a number of years before. And I, I found that the girl had married the wrong boy, had about six kids, and they were all hungry, and they were all without sufficient clothes. I, I just said, could I take your kids to the store? She said, yes. And I took all those kids in my car, the whole mess of them. When I got down there, I said, now just go get what you want and come back up here. Now, that's a bad thing to say to a bunch of kids because they came back with armloads. They got exactly what they wanted. They came back up there, and I paid the bill. When I took them home, presented them back to their mother, when I went on down the highway, there was no human on the face of the earth as happy as I was. I was just cackling with laughter on the inside of me and outside. There was such fulfillment within me. Not that I had known their mother years ago, but I had seen a half a dozen little children with their cups running over. Well, no wonder I stay happy all the time. I've got a harvest from that. You see? I can tell you honestly, I am never sad. I am never depressed. I am never lonely. I live a full life, a happy life. I live, I live a life that I enjoy living. You see, give everything, anything you want. <laughs> Look around, see what you want a lot of, and start giving it so you can get it back. Don't give hate, you'll be getting a lump of it back. In Galatians 6 and 7, it says, don't be deceived. Je Jehovah, the heavenly God, he is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, whatsoever, good or bad, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He will reap it. Whatsoever he sows, he's going to reap. I have a little saying that I often repeat. It goes like this. says, anybody can count the seeds in an apple. But nobody can count the apples in a seed. So when you sow, you reap. But you reap in a different proportion. You can just sow one seed. You might get thousands of apples and millions of seeds from one seed that you sowed. And so the, the comeback can be so refreshing, so abundant, so wonderful, so glorious. Plant a smile. It might get a whole laugh back for you. Plant a kind word. You may get a hug and a kiss back. 
Whatever you plant comes back. This is the law that God has set for us. How about planting some good stuff? Jesus said, Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God, put God first in your life, and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. If God can come first in your life, my mother taught me when I was a boy, says, now, uh, when you receive your money, take God's part of it out and don't keep it with yours because it's not yours. Don't keep them together. So I had a box I kept the Lord's money in. When I went to church, I took the Lord's money and, and gave it to church. But I didn't keep the two together. The Lord's money was sacred unto the Lord, and I was taught that. And, and sometimes the Lord's box had more in it than my box had in it. It was a real temptation to do a little borrowing on the side. She was very quick to tell me that the Lord's percentage of interest was high, 20%. So I left it alone. And I would give it to the Lord. I was brought up that way until I presume there's never been a dollar ever passed through my hands in my life that the Lord didn't get his share plus some more because I was brought up that way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Give God first. All these other things will be added unto you. How many believe that? I do too. The great wise man Solomon said these words in Ecclesiastes 11 and 1. Cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. If you just cast it out on the waters. In the Bible, waters is always people. From Revelation right straight back through to Daniel. Waters, multitudes of waters is always people. Cast your bread upon the people. After many days, it'll come back to you. The things you have planted, the things you've done, the things you've given, they'll come back. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 29, Jesus answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake. For my sake, for my sake, maybe for half an hour, maybe for a day, maybe for a week, maybe for a month. We have one of the members of our class, his wife and son are here right now. He's in Indonesia. I just want to tell you something. He's going to get something. God has said so. That if you, if you just place to one side for a short time those that you love, those that you care for, those that you appreciate, he says, I'll do something for you. No man that has done this for my sake and the gospel's sake, he should receive an hundredfold. Anybody going to help me with that? Hundredfold. Say it. Hey, that's pretty good, isn't it? Hundredfold. He should receive an hundredfold now. Oh, these people going around talking about pie in the sky. I'll take mine in South Bend. <laughs> receive a hundredfold now in this time houses brethren sisters mothers children lands and in the world to come eternal life in the world to come eternal life God will not only give it back to you here he'll give it back to you there and so you're going to have it in a, in a double portion if you're glad for it say amen God makes certain provisions for those who seek him. The great psalmist said in Psalm 34 and 10, Young lions do lack and suffer hunger. Now, nobody but a, a man that lived out in the open would know that. He was a, a boy that lived out in the open fields and in the open world, and he could see those poor skinny lions uh, in the wintertime especially. And he says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek Jehovah, our Lord, they shall not want any good thing. They shall not want any good thing. <laughs> Glory be to God. They shall not want any good thing. There's some things not good for you is what I'm trying to get across here. The things that are good for you and are right for you that'll keep you spiritual. 
that'll keep you walking the right way and the good way. You shall not want those things because God will see that you get them. You say, how does all this function? We read in Malachi 3 and 10 uh, these words. God says to the people, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, in, in that day, the storehouse was in Jerusalem. That's where the temple was. The whole nation went up to Jerusalem to worship, just as if everybody in America were to go up to Washington, D.C. to worship. Everybody went up to Washington to worship, you know. In those days, they went up there to worship, and that's where their storehouse was. All the clergy of the entire country were given their, their funds from Jerusalem so that they went throughout the whole nation preaching and teaching and blessing the people. So they were to bring their tithes into that place. Where should we bring our tithes? We should bring our tithes into the place that feeds our souls. You are not supposed to go and buy yourself a gift with your tithes. Not even a Bible. You'd be amazed the number of people who says, well, I use my tithes to buy a Bible. Are you here or not? The Bible teaches us that the tithe is holy, H-O-L-Y, the tithe is holy unto the Lord, and that you're not to give it uh, to your in-laws that are broke, and that you're, you're, you're not to give it uh, to your neighbors, that you're to bring it into the place that feeds your spirit. Is that all right? You say, but I don't go to church anywhere. I get all of my, my blessing off of television. Well, send, send it there. I get most of my blessing in a church. I get a part of it somewhere else. Send it there. I'm not trying to circumscribe as to what you should do. I'm only saying the Bible says bring your tithing to the storehouse, and the storehouse was the core of the blessing that flowed out to the people. If you're getting your total blessing from one place, put your total tithe there. That there might be meat in mine house. That's the second clause. That if you don't supply the need of the place that is blessing you, it'll cease to bless you. It'll die. Everybody still here? Yeah. If you don't support the place that's blessing you, one day you'll wake up to get it and it won't be there. You'll have starved it to death. And he says, that there might be sufficient in my house to carry on. Then he says, then prove me. Herewith saith the Lord of hosts. You're reading Malachi 3.10 with me. Prove me. God wants to be proved. He's willing for that. Saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now, not only is he going to bless you uh, in a natural way, but the windows of heaven is where the spiritual glory comes down. And he said he would open the glory, the, the anointing of heaven upon you. And he said, you won't have capacity to hold it all. Well, that's about the shape I'm in, you know. Don't have the capacity to hold all the blessing. It flows like a river. And uh, God wants every one of us to flow that way. If you believe it, say amen. In 1 Kings uh, chapter 17 and verse 14, it gives a very interesting incident. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Elijah speaking, The bale of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail unto the day that the Lord sinneth rain upon the earth. Here was a widow. She was ready to die. And uh, the man of God said, if you will give me a cake of this, I promise you that as long as there is a famine in the land and no rain, you will always have meal in your barrel. You will always have oil in your bottle. And, and the woman believed it. And if she had said no, I'm not going to believe that. I am going to, uh, I'm, I am going to uh, get mine first. And if there's any left over, if we're full, I'll, I'll see if there's a little I can give you. But she didn't do that. She gave 
she gave first to the servant of God, and because of that, she never did have a need. She never did. As long as there was a, a drought in the land, she had no problems. Her need was supplied because she gave to God first. Now, I have found that in my own life. I am not afraid to trust God. I am not afraid to trust God's people. I have a big lump of faith down on the inside of me, believing that all things are going to be all right. You got it? It's great to have it. In Philippians 4 and 19, it says, But my God, this is a great one, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That would be a good one to put on your wall and, and, and a plaque. Uh, Philippians 4 and 19. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The great psalmist said it in this way. He says, I have been young, and this is Psalm 37, 25. I have been young, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. <laughs> he had a whole life of experience. He had been a young man. He, now he was an old man. But he said, I'd like to tell you something. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never seen their seed begging bread. My mother used to quote that when I was a boy, and she'd say, son, you will never beg. You will never beg. And I would say, why? She said, I have loved God, and I have served God, and I have given to God what belongs to God, and you cannot beg. You will be blessed. And I said, well, I'm mighty glad of that. And it's just been that way. The Lord has been good to me all the days of my life. In Psalm 41 and verse 1, it tells us about the liberal giver is delivered. God brings him deliverance. Let's read it together. Psalm 41 and 1, Blessed is he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. That means the liberal person that helps others and delivers others and blesses others, that he will be delivered. He that considereth the poor, he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. Do you ever consider the poor? Now, we did something recently that we don't talk about, uh, but a certain person coming to our church here was very faithful uh, to the church. And we're a little elderly, and, uh, and, and their car looked to me like the worst one on the parking lot. And, uh, and we just told them that we'd take that old jalopy and drop it off somewhere and, and replace it with a nicer-looking car. I have never seen two women happier than those two women became when we considered the poor and gave them transportation to come to church with. And uh, that was been in, within the last month. But when you look around, you look for those that have need and bless them a little bit. And if you'll, if you'll do that, the Lord will deliver you in the time of trouble. Yeah. If you'll do that, the Lord will deliver you in your time of trouble. You'll say, hey, Lord, I have somebody. Yeah, I know it. And you'll just go sailing through. How many like to sail through? The wise man said in Proverbs 3 and 9, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shalt thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst with new wine. <laughs> How many are ready for that kind of blessing? If you'll honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruit of thine increase, your barns will be full, and the presses will run. And the devil's a liar. Tell him I said so. If he says it don't work, he's a liar. It will work. In that same book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 25 says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered. This is one of my favorite scriptures. He that watereth shall be watered. If you'll give water, you'll get water. If you see a thirsty soul, give him some water, and you'll get watered. He that watereth is watered. Aren't you glad for it? Isaiah said these magnificent words in chapter 58 and verse 10. If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then 
shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. Now, you see, the Bible says if you will give to the soul, that the person that's hungry, and you, if you will satisfy the one that is afflicted, <laughs> that your light will rise, that you will come from nothing to something, from nobody to somebody, that your light will rise, and, and the darkness that you used to have will become like the noonday. God will make it sparkle all around you. How many are ready for the sparkle? Uh, and, and in that same line, the wise man Solomon said in Proverbs 19, 17, He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. Don't you like that? You listening? He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will pay him again. And now you can mark that, make you another plaque. You know, if you follow me, you'd have plaques all over your house, wouldn't you? <laughs> but that all be the word of the Lord. And you say, I can't believe that. Well, it's all right. You can't receive it either. And you'll get in difficult times and you'll say, oh, dear God, why didn't I? Well, why live in remorse all the time? Do it ahead of time. You don't have any remorse. Then you've, you, then you've got it right. And all the people said, we read in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, these beautiful words. It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly. Now, you ought to remember that. He that giveth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. That's all he's going to get back, is sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Glory be to God. How many like that? Paul said in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, God loveth a cheerful giver. 